Hey guys, Rick from here, and today in this video, guys, today I am doing a long-awaited video suggested by a couple of you guys. Today I'm going to be saying goodbye to my Hands of Time customs. So guys, I'm going to be dismantling pretty much my Hands of Time custom minifigs and of course the, uh, what is it, the custom uh, vehicles from the custom sets. And I just want to get something out of the way before we do get into the video. It's just I want to let you guys know that I'm not going to be releasing any more Hands of Time related content after this video except for one last thing, and that is my episode 9 of Time Jumpers, season finale of Time Jumpers. Besides that, not going to be doing any more content that is relevant to Hands of Time for now. I don't know what the future holds. We will see. But yeah, guys, just want to get that out of the way. And of course, I want to tell you, I want to thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have given me for all these customs that I have built and showcased for you guys through videos and you guys have just you've given me amazing support and I thank you for that but yeah guys without further ado let's go ahead and jump right on in to the video alright guys so we are going to first off go with or we're gonna go over the good guy side first as we did last time if you guys didn't know I made Day of the Departed customs and uh, custom minifigs so I did that, and I had a goodbye day of the party customs video. So I did. I started off with the good guys first, and I just built stands. I didn't combine the custom sets, but I did something like this. So I started off with the good guys first last year, starting off with the good guys this year again. So first off, uh, we're just gonna go through all of these vehicles and all of these things. If you haven't seen the videos, I have a huge playlist with all my hands of time stuff. So if you want to watch that, you can watch that. And yeah, I'm just gonna go through each individual thing and we will push it, push it to the side when we don't need it and we're through with it. All right guys, so first off, we're gonna start off with the two lead characters of this Hands of Time season. We have Kai and Nia. That's why they are the only ones shooting their elements of fire and water. All right guys, so first off, we have Kai in his boat. And so this boat I built and it's just a fire boat, flame boat. And I call it the flame boat because fire boat sounds like an emergency vehicle uh, if used in emergency services. Uh, but yeah, so it has a stud shooter, trans orange studs, shooting fire. Kai right there, he has a uh, two handlebars to hold on to and control the thing. And he has this little compartment in the back for who knows what. And over here, he has two seats. All right, guys, going to go ahead and toss him to the side. All right, guys, over here... We have Nia on her clear stand. I did give all the flying vehicles, including the bad guys, guys. <laughs> bad guys, guys. No, including the bad dudes, guys. I did give them clear stands, so they look like they're flying. That's pretty cool. And I'm surprised how I pulled this off for Nia's vehicle. What I did is that I took a gray exofor- or light- no, yeah. Light gray exoforce arm and one of these droid staff pieces that they would use to make the droid staffs from Star Wars fly. And turns out, if you combine that with an Exoforce arm, it clips onto the Golden Sword on Nia's hoverboard, and it works out perfectly for Nia's hoverboard. Makes it look like she is flying. Perfect for a layout if you did, if you want to make Nia's hoverboard. And yeah, guys, uh, it's just on a 4x4 green base plate. So yeah, guys, here is Nia, her hoverboard, and yeah, that pretty much does it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, guys, Kai's boat is actually, if you have, if you watch my Time Jumper series, uh, it transforms from Kai's bike, and yeah, guys. So, and then the uh, Nia's hoverboard as she shoots her water element that attaches onto this side over here of the Ultra Elemental Raider, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only thing that it has significance except for the fact that it's a hoverboard and you know, you can swish it around and stuff. But yeah, guys, that does it. For Nia. Alright guys, we're done with the two lead characters of this Hands of Time season. Let's go ahead and move on to the rest of our minifigs and vehicles. Okay guys, so here is the rest of the Ultra Elemental Raider. If you do want to see the full review video, I'm just flying by all of these. Uh, if you do want to see me go more in depth of these, uh, what is it, of these vehicles, then I will, I already have the playlist in the link in, of the description and stuff. Yeah, look in the description box for the Hands of Time playlist, you'll find it there, and then you'll find the video where I go more in depth of each individual uh, vehicle and stuff like that. But yeah guys, so here is the Ultra Elemental Raider, this is Zane's, 
ice speeder, that's what I call it at least, and then the Lloyd and Kai's bike, they just detached like that. Kai's bike, I just left on there because he's supposed to have his boat right now. Just left on there just because, and then Lloyd's bike, uh, Lloyd already has his mech over there, so we don't need them to be in their bikes. And then this is Zane's uh, ice speeder, there you go. I'm just going to leave that there for now, and I just need to go through Jay's lightning jetpack there you go it's pretty cool i did this sort of inverted thing where i have a 4x4 green base plate and then it's inverted with this long hollow trans light blue piece right over there so that's inverted and then you can stick the technic pins right there as you can see and those just stick into the hollowness of that piece and it makes it look like he's flying with a little bit of electricity flying behind him now how is jay attached with his armor on if you didn't know the back end of a stud is actually attached, it can attach into the back end of a scabbard piece with the two double pauldrons, and yeah, that's it. And then Jay's, uh, what is it, Jay's lightning jetpack, technic uh, technical, you can clip in over there, and yeah, let's go ahead and move aside Jay, and then finally, we have Cole, last person to complete our Ultra Elemental Raider. And she just has a flyer jet with some two control sticks. I haven't done that before. Or I don't think I've shown you guys, shown you guys that before. So give him some of those. And she just is on a clear stand. And the, that uh, bottom section of his flyer just attaches onto the top. Alright guys, so now we can move aside those two things. And I have Kyle Lloyd's bike. I don't know why I had them over to the left side. Go ahead and move them over to the right. Oh, here, guys, we have Ronin. Ronin doesn't really have a vehicle. He just has a jetpack with some exhaust coming out, which is a flame piece. And he has his laser rifle. He's just on clear stand. Go ahead and move him to the side. And then, guys, over here, we have Lloyd's mech. Now, guys, if you haven't seen this video, it's pretty cool. I took Aaron's mech from Aaron's battle suit. I think that's what it's called. I took that. It is an official Nexo Knight set, and I could change it completely to, to look like the Hands of Time Lloyd. So, that's what he looks like. He has a silver katana, and then his shoulder pauldrons are just housed on the back. And this red Technic piece is actually supposed to act as, a, uh, as the actual handle when Lloyd is not using the sword. And it's mounted over there in his scabbard. So, I changed up a little bit of these things. That's why I'm going over the... Uh, what are the... Uh, the vehicles again, if you guys have not, if you guys just want a quick update, so there you go. And then you can open the cockpit like so, and Lloyd is in there, my custom Lloyd of course. And yeah, all this stuff guys is 100% custom except for some of the minifigs like Misako, because you know, you can't really change Misako, they don't really even release new pictures. So yeah, alright guys, so here is the final thing for, final vehicle for the good guys. We have our Destiny's Shadow. Now guys, I want to show you the main attraction we have mr cyrus borg now if you guys don't know who he is he plays sort of a significant role in hands of time but hands of time has been released a lot of places so i'm not gonna put spoiler warning but yeah guys he has an exo force arm as sort of a like wrench piece i guess looks pretty scared and then this is lord business's uh normal business outfit took a piece took a square piece of tape colored it with a sharpie there you go it looks like he has the Gray trench coat with the uh, some gray pants and the black turtleneck. I'm not going to call it a neck. I don't want to damage my Lego minifigs with Sharpie. And then he has this computer chip over here because, you know, he likes technology. He's Cyrus Borg. And then I have him with his wheelchair and those clear studs just allow him to, to attach on to a studded base, such as the floor of Destiny Shadow. And guys, uh, I have the real Destiny Shadow and this Destiny Shadow, so, you know, it's fun to compare them sometimes. Pretty cool. I have uh, Misako at the front, and then we have those two weapons over there, and I don't know what type of voice I was doing. And then guys, we have Sensei Wu over here with our plasma key. If you guys don't know what that is, go check it out. Watch Time Jumpers, that's my Hands of Time custom series, stop motion series, that's pretty cool. You can remove the roof, put that over there, and yeah guys, that pretty much does it for the- Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry about that guys, and I don't know why Sensei Wu fell. Oh. And I have them on elevated clear stand sort of thing. And we have the white wings. I forgot a lot of details. Whoops. Uh, purple exhaust. Wanted to include that. And yeah, the move, the roof can be removed. And then up top, over here, we have the dragon head. 
Alright, let's get Wu back on there and move him to the side. Finally, guys, last two things. We have our reversal blade holder, and that is in the Hiroshi's Labyrinth jungle right there. We have our reversal blade, and that is what everybody's going after. Good guys and the bad guys, that's what's in the center. And we also have our slow-mo blade that's found on Tiger Widow Island, if you have seen my stop-motion series. But yeah, guys, that pretty much does it for today's video. Not today's video. Um, that pretty much does it for the good guys section. Let's go ahead and move on to the bad guys section. Okay, guys, so here we have the bad guys section. Last segment of the video before we wrap it all up. And I realized how long this video is going to be. Sorry if this video is so long. If you made it all the way through here, then, you know, congrats to you. You're still watching. But yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, let's start off with the Vermilion Shredder. You guys don't know what this vehicle is. It is called the Shredder because it has this function where it can shred things with its two katanas, like so. And it has this sort of antenna thing as an engine, and it's sort of like a hover vehicle sort of thing. So yeah, guys, let's go ahead and move that to the side. Alright, guys, next thing, we have Commander Blunk's personal flyer. It's on a clear stand because, you know, it's a flyer. It has a gun, another artillery gun to the right side, and then we have a, uh, his axe over here. Improved his axe to make it look more like a custom axe and make it look sort of more like the actual Vermilion axe uh, from Lego. It has an exhaust flame over here and then he just sits in the cockpit. No windscreen. I don't know why I've never given him a windscreen, but then he has the two wings over there. Just some long tile pieces, lever, orange button. And yeah, guys, that pretty much does it for that one. Let's go ahead and move that to the side. Next thing, guys, we have the Vermilion hoverboard over here. Again, on a clear stand because it's a hoverboard. So it hovers sort of thing. Got his two weapons. Got these nice little red barb pieces. And yeah, it's not really that much. And yeah, but yeah, not really that much detail to go over. Pretty small build. That pretty much does it for that. And then over here, second to last, bad guy build. We have the buff million. So guys, this is Commander Ragmonk. I want to show you guys this. This is my... I haven't shown you guys this yet. And this is just recently added to the custom collection. Even though I'm going to destroy him. Like right after this video. But yeah, this is my Commander Ragmonk. He looks pretty weird with the dish hat. But yeah, I tried giving him some bulky armor from the last season of Hero Factory. Because I actually have one of those sets. And I couldn't fit a garment on helmet, so I get decided to give him that dish piece. I think it looks okay. And yeah, pretty much does it for the buff million. Now I know the actual buff million does have arms, but I originally thought it was like a robotic snake, huge snake sort of thing. Has a laser gun. I shortened that a little bit because last time it was super long. Took out some of the light elements because I think I needed, yeah, I needed that for a throwback Thursday build. So didn't put them back. Oh well. Got some silver tooth barb pieces over here, and then we have a ball jointed snake uh, tail right there. And yeah, I just originally thought the buff million was a mechanical snake, so decided it should be that. And I kept it that way because I don't, I seen no reason why not to. And we have a nice little chair. And Commander Blunk, no, Commander Ragmunk attaches side studs on the back of his legs. And yeah, I sort of used like the snot technique, which I never realized. That's pretty cool. Alright guys, putting that to the side. Finally guys, we have the Convoy. I think I've only featured this once in Time Jumpers, unfortunately. I was going to feature it in the Scraps video, my Director's Cut, aka, I'm just kidding. But yeah, if you guys have seen that video, I'm not making a lot of references to Time Jumpers, but I, tr I featured, that, featured this vehicle in that Lost episode. I will show you guys the raw footage later in the future, but... Yeah, I just wanted to say that. But anyways, guys, we have another, some more silver tooth bar pieces. Those two, like, snake fangs. And then over here, we have some little turrets on jumpers so they can rotate around. And those can be manned by two vermilion warriors. Don't know why I gave this vehicle wings. I think it was just for the, uh, the play feature of the rotating turrets. Have this thing over here. You can see it as, like, a sight or maybe some tiny blasters. I don't know. And then we have this control panel over here. And we have our, my crux. I don't think I showed you guys my crux. This is my crux, guys. Uh, it's the mailman dude with the half mask and everything. And he has the pause time blade. Looking at the pause time blade. This is my acronyx. He has the forward time blade. He's got a Lloyd cape. 
uh, one of the shorter Lord Capes from 2012, and he has Klaus's face, the other expression with the green eyes as he uses sorcery, holding onto the handle, which is this grappling hook, and that's been used in effect in the uh, uh, time in my time jumpers episode, it's episode four that I think I showed it. But yeah, guys, that pretty much does it for the entire video, guys. You don't know how good this feels to finally finish this. I've been waiting ages. I'm like, okay, I have to get time jumpers done. And the day, or not the day, but before I post the season finale for Time Jumpers and all my and the rest of my hands of time videos are out, I need to get this video done. I've had all the customs lined up on their clear stands, waiting to be shown on camera, and they finally have. So thank you guys so much. You have no idea how good this feels to finally finish this video. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Anyways, guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's very awesome video. I know I did making it, and again, I want to thank you guys for all the support you guys have given me for making all these custom sets and all of these custom minifigs. I look forward to making more of these for Season 8 of Ninjago, whatever that's going to be. But yeah, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Please do hit that like and subscribe button for some more fresher content on my channel. If you did enjoy today's video, I'd love to hear your opinion in the comment section down below. Please do leave a comment. And yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Brick Filmer signing out. Peace out, guys.